Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And for this lesson, we're going to be doing some factoring of expressions. So let's take a look at what we got here. We have this binomial. It's a binomial because it's got two terms, just like a bicycle has two wheels, right? One term, two terms. All right? It's a binomial. So we're going to factor it. We want to break it down into separate parts or separate pieces that have smaller exponents. All right. So first, let's look at our coefficients, because we, what we want to do is let me let me back up a little bit. What you want to do is you want to try to find a GCF first. Now, every expression is not going to have a GCF, but you want to check to see if the expression has a GCF. GCF stands for greatest common factor, greatest common factor. That's what a GCF is. So you try to find a GCF by first looking at your coefficients. What's a coefficient? Coefficients are the big number that's next to the letter. Right. This three is a coefficient. This three tells you how many h's to the fourths you have. It's, it's one, two, three of them. It's three h's to the fourths. Instead of writing h to the fourth plus h to the fourth plus h to the fourth, we just write three times h to the fourth or three h to the fourth. It saves time and it saves space. All right. Over here, there's no there's no coefficient written. That means there's one. There's only one of them. So we got three h to the fourth and we got one h to the third. All right. So you look at the three and the one, you say, oh, okay, out of three and one, what's my greatest common factor out of three and one? Three and one, well, three is a prime number. One is neither prime nor composite, right? So if you if your two numbers are three and one, your greatest common factor out of those two numbers would be one. Because one is the biggest number, the greatest number, that's a factor of both of those numbers. One is a factor of one and one is a factor of three, all right? So for your GCF, and this is what you want to write down on your paper, right? You want to write down, you want to say, okay, G, C, F, you want to put a one. Now, I mean, you don't, you don't have to put the one, but just for our purposes, we're going to put the one for right now. Then you look at your variables. Then you look at your variables. You got H to the fourth power and H to the third power. H to the fourth and H to the third, right? Now, when you're trying to find the GCF of variables, if you have variables that are the same, so you got H and you got H. These are the same, right? For the GCF, you take the variable that has the smallest exponent, the smallest exponent. So three is less than four. So that means that H to the third would be the GCF of those two. So you put the one with the H to the third and that gives you H to the third or one H to the third. Now we can simplify that and just call it H to the third because this coefficient of one you never need the coefficient of one. You don't need it, right? It just tells you how many h to the thirds you have. You got one of them. So if you just write h to the third, that means that you got one of them. Therefore, you don't need to write the coefficient one. So that's my GCF. So the first step is to find the GCF. The next step is to divide each term by the GCF. So first you find the GCF, then you divide by the GCF. So what you're going to do is you're going to write the GCF, which is h to the third, then you write a set of parentheses. Now, if you're wondering how wide should the parentheses be, because you're going to leave a blank space in between. How wide? It should be wide enough to fit two terms in there. Now, why two terms and not three terms or four or five? Because your original problem started out with two terms. So if you start out with two terms, you're going to end up with two terms inside your parentheses. Now, how do you figure out what terms go into parentheses? By doing division. You, you find the GCF, then you divide by the GCF. But what divides by the GCF? The original two terms. So look at this. You're going to take the first term, 3h to the fourth, divided by h to the third. Right? Put your equal sign. Now, we're, doing some, we're just doing straight division now. Look at your coefficients. That's a 3, and that's an invisible 1 right here, right? What's 3 divided by 1? 3 divided by 1 is just 3. So you put your 3. And then you got your h's, h to the fourth divided by h to the third. You got to use the division rule for exponents, which says that you take that variable, you write it one time, and then you take the exponents and you're going to subtract them. You're going to subtract them, the top minus the bottom. So it's going to look like this. See how I wrote four minus three up there? But then you do the four minus three, you get one, and then you're going to have three h to the first. Now, just like this one is not necessary to write, really, this exponent one is not necessary to write. 
So you could just say 3H. And then you take that 3H, put it inside the parentheses. Like that. Then you're going to do the same thing with H to the third. So now we got H to the third divided by the GCF, which is H to the third. Now, what happens whenever you divide something by the same exact thing? It's always going to be equal to one. The coefficient is going to be one. Always. That's always going to happen. The coefficient is going to be equal to one. H to the third divided by H to the third is equal to one. Just like 20 divided by 20 is equal to one. Just like five divided by five is equal to one. Just like X divided by X is equal to one. So this is equal to one. But let me show you something else though. We could employ the division rule for exponents and we still gonna get one because watch what happens. We got H and we got H. But we're gonna subtract the exponents. Whenever your bases are the same, the H is considered a base, right? Because you got a base and you got an exponent. You subtract the exponent. So you do three minus three. Three minus three is zero. So that means we got H to the zero power. Now there's another exponent rule in addition to the division rule, right? The zero exponent rule. Whenever you see a zero for your exponent, that means that whole term that has the zero exponent is gonna turn into a positive one. So this whole H to the zero, is gonna turn into a one. But isn't that what we got already anyway? Because whenever you divide something by itself or you divide something by the same exact thing, your quotient will always be one. We learned that, you probably learned that in elementary school, right? But either way, you get one. So then you take that one, put it inside the parentheses, it's positive, so you put a plus sign, and there you go. So now we got H cubed, or H to the third power, times the quantity of 3H plus 1. Now, how do we know if we're done? You know you're done because you don't have any, any greatest common factor inside the parentheses out of 3H and 1 besides 1. If 1 is your greatest common factor, nothing changes. I mean, you can factor out a 1 all you want, but what's that going to change? You're still going to have 3H plus 1. Also, because this is a binomial, it's not the sum of difference of two cubes, so you can't factor it that way. It's not a difference of two squares, so you can't factor it that way. Um, so you're basically done. That's how you know you're done. Now, understanding that you, understanding if you're done also requires that you know and are aware of the other different methods of factoring. There are about six methods of factoring, right, depending upon what the expression looks like. If it's a binomial, depending on what it looks like, there are ways to factor it. If it's a trinomial, depending on what it looks like, there are ways to factor it. If it's a four term polynomial or six terms or you know it just depends you know because you could be factoring by grouping there's a lot of different methods and i have videos in different playlists based on the different methods of factoring that you can check out right here on the channel and make sure you subscribe to the channel too make sure you subscribe to the channel at all this math and also subscribe to not subscribe but follow us on instagram because we put content on instagram too at all this math all right but this is your final answer h to the third power times the quantity of 3h plus one. That's your final answer. All right. Now, what I want you to do is ask your teacher or your professor or whoever for some practice problems. Use this video as a guide and go factor some expressions and pull the GCF out of some expressions. All right. Because it's not enough just to watch my video. That's not enough. If you don't go get practice, you're going to forget anyway. And it's not going to matter. I don't want you to forget. All right. Go get some practice. I'll catch up with you on the next video. Peace.